Welcome to John Recap. Get hooked on the Recap roller coaster ride. Do not let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. Today, I'm gonna recap first season of 2011 action, drama, fantasy series called Teen Wolf. Beacon Hills Preserve sees Beacon County Sheriff's patrol cars arrive. Officers, equipped with flashlights and cadaver dogs, commence their search in the area. Over at the McCall residence, Scott McCall is redoing his lacrosse stick pocket. Once done, he does pull-ups and while brushing his teeth, catches a noise outside. Equipped with a baseball bat, he steps onto the wraparound porch to investigate. From the porch roof, Styles Stalinsky dangles upside down, startling both boys who cry out. Once they settle, Styles informs them that his father, the sheriff, along with the Beacon County Department and State Police, are in the woods searching for a body. He elaborates that joggers discovered only half of a young woman's dead body, prompting the ongoing search for the other half. Styles parks his powder blue jeep at the closed preserve entrance. Heading into the woods, Scott expresses reluctance, citing his need for a good night's sleep before practice. Styles jests, highlighting their bench-sitting role. Scott asserts his plan to play this year as part of the team's first line, which Styles mockingly labels as pathetically unrealistic. As they ascend, Scott falls behind, describing himself as a severe asthmatic. He pauses to take a hit from his inhaler. Styles reaches the ridge, spotting officers and dogs searching. Enthusiastic, he heads forward, leaving Scott, who requires another inhaler hit, far behind. Attempting to avoid the searcher's sightline, Styles inadvertently confronts an officer in K-9. The sheriff intervenes, recognizing his son. The sheriff inquires about Styles' phone eavesdropping and Scott's whereabouts. Styles fibs, claiming Scott rests at home. The sheriff, skeptical, calls for Scott who's hiding behind a tree. Unable to locate him, the sheriff seizes Styles and leads him back. Scott dons his American Eagle Outfitters burgundy hoodie, venturing through the woods solo. A sight ahead grabs his attention, prompting him to use his inhaler. As he prepares to puff, a panicked deer herd charges toward him. Amid their rush, his inhaler goes flying as he collapses amidst the hooves. After the herd passes, he stands, using his smartphone's flashlight app to find his inhaler. The light uncovers pale, almost white, flesh. Scott scans back and observes a girl's upper body, split at the waist with entrails on fallen leaves. Panic sets in, causing him to lose footing and tumble into a ravine. Standing, he hears a low growl, spotting a wolf-like creature with glowing white eyes nearby. It lunges, knocking Scott down. He struggles but the beast bites hard. Scott screams and rolls away. Rising, he flees blindly through the woods onto a road, narrowly avoiding a speeding SUV's close call. Scott, huffing from fear and exertion, pulls up his hoodie and t-shirt to show a big bloody bite. Deep puncture wounds form a rough circle on his right side, stretching from just below the ribs to just above his waist. Rain starts as Scott stands, panting, in the street. A wolf's howl echoes. Next morning, Scott arrives at Beacon Hills High School on his bike, right when Jackson Whittemore parks his Porsche. Jackson bumps Scott with the car door and warns him with a menacing tone to watch the paint job. Later on, Scott displays his wound to Styles. It's covered with a white gauze and tape, with a little blood seeping through. Scott figures he was attacked by a wolf due to the howling. Styles dismisses this, pointing out the lack of wolves in California for like 60 years. Scott then spills that he stumbled upon the body in the woods. Styles gets all pumped about the discovery, but Lydia Martin's approach distracts him. He greets her, but she ignores him. He blames Scott for Lydia's snub, asserting Scott's dragging me down to your nerd depths. I'm a nerd by association. I've been scarlet nerded by you. In English class, Scott and Styles sit as the teacher writes Kafka's metamorphosis on the board. The teacher shares that the cops have a suspect in the girls' woods death. A loud cell phone ring startles Scott, who looks around but can't pinpoint the source. Then, he spots Allison Argent sitting on an outside bench. Scott hears her conversation as clear as if she's right beside him, instead of yards away. Allison chats with her mom about leaving home without a pen. An administrator joins her, leading her inside. She tells him that they've just moved from San Francisco after a year. This was their longest stay in recent memory. Shortly, she joins the English class, gets introduced, and takes the desk behind Scott. Without words, he hands her a pen their eyes briefly meeting as she says thanks. They cross paths again at day's end by Scott's locker. He's caught staring and she grins, soon joined by Lydia, who praises her jacket. Even though their lockers are apart, Scott hears every word. Lydia inquires about the jacket, and Allison explains her mom was a buyer for a San Francisco boutique. Lydia crowns Allison her new best friend just as Jackson shows up. Their embrace and kiss make it clear they're a couple. Lydia and Jackson invite Allison to a Friday night party, but she declines, citing it as family night. Jackson mentions everyone's heading to the party post-scrimmage. Allison assumes it's about football and says so. Jackson smirks, dubbing football a joke in Beacon. He reveals lacrosse as the school's game, boasting about their three-time state championship wins. Lydia credits Jackson as the team captain. Then, they drag Allison to lacrosse practice. Scott and Styles burst onto the practice field. Styles gripes about Scott playing, 
fearing he'll be left alone on the bench. Scott contends he can't sit out again since his whole life is sitting on the sidelines. He reiterates his determination to make first line. Allison and Lydia show up in the stands, and Scott once more locks eyes with the new girl. She grins, and coach Bobby Finstock hails Scott. The coach tosses a goalie stick and helmet at him, stating he wants Scott and goal to boost the other's confidence, as he'll be an easy target. Allison queries Lydia about Scott, but she claims she doesn't know him. Scott's hearing amps up again, allowing him to catch their convo from his goalie spot. Lydia questions Allison's interest, to which Allison responds, he's in my English class. A whistle blows. And with his super amplified ears, Scott's temporarily deafened and bewildered by the noise. He covers his ears, visibly in pain. Amid this, a player launches the ball, smacking Scott's helmet, sending him to the ground in a daze. The teddy bear's cobra style starts playing as Scott regains his stance, firming his grip on the stick. He readies for the next ball, snatching it out of the air. Styles, the other players, Allison and Lydia are all shocked by his skill. He stops three more attempts in quick succession, impressing everyone. Jackson's not so impressed, appearing angry as he shoves to the front. He flings the ball toward the goal. Scott nabs it with ease, causing Styles to jump up. The crowd, including Lydia, erupts into cheers. Jackson, taken aback, locks eyes with Lydia, seemingly baffled by her support for Scott. Later, as they stroll through the Beacon Hills Preserve, Scott opens up to Styles about the sensation of time slowing on the field, giving him all the time in the world to catch the ball. He delves into his heightened hearing and sense of smell. He even detects a mint mojito gum stick in Styles' pocket, which turns out to be true. Styles first looks puzzled but then brushes it off, returning to his jovial self. Scott frets that an infection might be flooding his body with adrenaline before shock sets in. Styles takes on a knowing tone, mentioning an infection he's heard of, lycanthropy. Scott, unfamiliar, panics a bit. Styles jokes that it's bad but only on the full moon, howling like a wolf. Scott catches on, realizing the jest, but he's still serious about something being wrong. Styles continues jesting, saying I know, you're a werewolf, and growls, even quipping about melting silver for the upcoming full moon. Suddenly, Scott halts, believing they're back where he spotted the body and lost his inhaler, yet there's nothing but dead leaves. Styles suggests the killer moved the body. As Scott hunts for his inhaler, Derek Hale appears seemingly out of thin air. Derek strides toward them, demanding to know why they're on private property. They feign ignorance. Derek throws Scott's inhaler back to him and leaves without more words. Styles points out Derek's older, mentioning Scott should recall him since his family perished in a fire like ten years ago. Thunder rolls as Scott locks the door at the Beacon Hills Animal Clinic. In the restroom, he uses hydrogen peroxide, exposing the bite site on his side. The bite from the night prior is vanished. He's fully healed in just 24 hours. Lugging a hefty bag that might be cat food down the clinic hall, Scott heads for the cat clinic. The moment he enters, the felines howl, hiss, and claw at their cages. Alarmed, Scott retreats, shutting the door behind him. Out in the rain, Allison Argent stands by the clinic, knocking hard on its glass door. As Scott unlocks and opens up, he finds Allison in tears. She babbles about briefly diverting her attention from the road to change her iPod song for like two seconds and accidentally hitting a dog. Claiming the dogs in her car, she leads Scott outside. Popping the hatchback on her blue Pontiac G3, the dog growls and barks at her. Scott reassures her that the animal's just scared, lowering himself to its eye level to soothe it. His eyes briefly emit a slight yellow glow. The dog immediately settles, cowering and whimpering. After examining the dog, Scott figures its leg is broken. He's seen doctors splint enough, so he offers to make one. Noticing Allison's wet, shivering state, he suggests giving her a shirt from his back. Allison heads to the next room to change. Scott tries not to look, but he can't resist and watches through the glass door as she removes her wet top, standing with her back to him. Just as Scott finishes bandaging the dog's leg, Allison returns. The flirtatious dance continues as Scott spots an eyelash on Allison's cheek. She attempts to remove it, but he ends up doing it for her. Walking her to her car, Scott gathers courage to ask her to Lydia's party. Allison confesses she lied about family night to Lydia and Jackson, agreeing to the date. At home, Scott lies on his bed, gazing at the waxing gibbous moon above the window. He smiles contentedly, drifting into sleep. In bed, he rolls over and suddenly finds himself on a bed of damp leaves. He jolts awake, realizing he's in a forest cave. It's early morning, a thick fog shrouding the woods as he starts walking. Twigs snap, and Scott searches for the source. He spots a shadowy figure near a tree. Initially hard to discern through the fog, it takes shape as the creature that bit him two nights prior. Scott sprints, pursued by the creature. Scaling a rise, he encounters a wooden fence and leaps over, plunging into deep water. He surfaces in a backyard pool, where a homeowner waters plants, gaping as Scott offers a good morning. After school, in their lacrosse gear, Jackson confronts Scott at his locker. Jackson demands to know where Scott's getting his juice. Puzzled, Scott says his mom handles the shopping. Jackson elaborates that Scott's improved on field performance hints at chemical enhancement. 
Scott grasps that he means steroids and fires the question back at Jackson. Jackson grows furious, slamming Scott against the lockers. Scott admits he's confused by his newfound abilities and fears he's losing his mind. Jackson assumes Scott's joking and pledges to uncover his secret. A pump Styles approaches Scott during lacrosse practice, sharing that forensic evidence from the body in the woods points to wolf involvement. However, Scott's too focused on practice to stop and listen. Allison shows up, giving a wave to Scott who waves back. Coach Finstock lays out that this practice sets the first-line players. Scott catches the ball and promptly gets knocked by Jackson. Visibly ticked off, they stand for a classic face-off. Scott shifts almost as the whistle blows, taking control and charging downfield. He maneuvers around defenders, executing a forward flip over three players and scores between the goalie's legs. Coach Finstock announces Scott's placement on the first line. Styles sits on the bench, seemingly concerned. Later, Styles sits by his computer at home. Images of people with wolf heads, details about Wolfsbane and other arcane werewolf info scroll on the screen. Scott arrives, noticing Styles' agitation. He asks how much Adderall Styles took. Styles admits a lot, diving into his research. He explains Scott's a werewolf, displaying a book detailing how the full moon and strong emotions, or anything raising his heart rate, could trigger bloodlust and violence. Styles insists Scott must cancel his date with Allison because of the full moon and how she excites him. Scott refuses to cancel, so Styles grabs his phone, ready to do it himself. Scott's anger flares. He seizes Styles, pinning him to the wall. He raises a fist but stops, opting to flip a chair instead. After releasing Styles, he apologizes and leaves. Once Scott's gone, Styles notices claw marks on the chair's back. At home, Scott exits the bathroom to find his mom, Melissa McCall, waiting in the hall. She asks about the date, handing him car keys. Scott arrives at the Argent house to pick up Allison, who's dressed in a blue blazer and white shirt. At the party, Scott spots Derek Hale on one side of the yard. A dog behind Derek barks and growls. Derek glances back, silencing it. Allison briefly distracts Scott, and when he looks back, Derek's vanished. Scott witnesses a dark wolf-like figure bounding to the roof and vanishing. Scott and Allison dance. Lydia catches Scott's gaze, deeply engaged with a passionate Jackson, yet staring intently at Scott. Scott feels unwell, sweating and slightly delirious. He exits the party, heading to his car. Allison follows, seeing him speed away. Derek emerges from the shadows, introducing himself as a friend of Scott's. Back home, Scott sweats and pants, the full moon visible from his bedroom window. In the shower, in his jeans, his fingernails extend into claws. In the mirror, eyes aglow with amber yellow. Styles knocks on the door. Scott won't open but says he must find Allison. Styles reveals he saw her leave with someone from the party. Scott deduces Derek Hale is the werewolf who bit him and killed the girl. Styles then unveils that Derek was the person Allison left with. Scott, now fully transformed into his werewolf form, leaps out of his window and dashes off. He spots a parked car at the Beacon Hill Preserve entrance, sniffs the air, and heads into the woods. Styles drives to Allison's place. Victoria Argent answers the door and calls up to Allison, who stands on an upstairs landing. Trailing the scent, Scott discovers Allison's blue blazer hanging on a tree branch in the woods. Hearing footsteps, he calls out, Where is she? A whispered reply comes, She's safe from you. Utilizing his enhanced werewolf sight, Scott spots Derek Hale in the shadows. Derek seizes him, pressing him against a tree. After hearing something only he can, Derek signals for silence. Anxious, he says, they're already here. Run, and bolts. Scott gets left behind, attempting to run, but a flare on an arrow blinds him by hitting a nearby tree. Another arrow lodges in his right forearm, pinning him. With his improved sight returning, he observes three figures aiming crossbows from a distance. One figure emerges from the shadows, revealed as Chris Argent. Derek intervenes, tossing two of the hunters and breaking the arrow in Scott's arm. They flee from the assailants. Once they're safe, they halt. Scott leans on a tree, reverting to his fully human state. Derek reveals the hunters as the kind that's been after us for centuries. Scott then accuses Derek of making him a werewolf. Instead of denying it, Derek suggests he appreciate his newfound abilities. He claims the bite is a gift and insists Scott will require his guidance to master his newfound powers. Derek leaves with the declaration, You and me Scott, we're brothers now. Scott walks home, where Styles picks him up. Scott fears Allison's disdain, but Styles advises an impressive excuse and pledges support through his new circumstances. At school the next day, Scott apologizes without explanation, and Allison grants a second chance. A car horn honks, Allison's father in the family's burgundy Chevy Tahoe. As Scott turns to leave, he catches a scent and glances back, realizing Allison's dad is the lead hunter from the previous night. Following the prior incidents, Scott grapples with concerns about Allison's father being a hunter, leading to lacrosse practice distractions. Coach directs Jackson to use a long stick, causing Scott to face a beating from Jackson. His anger ignites his inner werewolf. And when Coach offers him another chance, Scott unintentionally dislocates Jackson's shoulder. Styles intervenes, preventing further trouble, 
while Derek observes from the sidelines. In the locker room, Scott shifts into a wolf-like state and attacks Styles. Once he regains control, Styles informs Scott that he can't play in the upcoming game, even if he's first line. At home, Melissa informs Scott that she'll attend his game, but she notices his odd behavior, humorously questioning if he's on drugs. He turns the question around, asking if she's ever used drugs, prompting her to exit, suggesting he rests if tired. On a Skype call with Styles, Derek confronts Scott about his practice transformation, warning him not to play or Derek will kill him. Scott informs Coach he can't play in the next game, and Coach questions the reason. Scott admits personal struggles, prompting Coach to ask if it's related to a romantic interest. Scott reveals it's about dealing with aggression, but Coach insists lacrosse is a way to manage it, and refusal means losing his first-line position. In the hallway, Scott and Allison discuss the game. She invites him to join their post-game outing with Lydia and Jackson. Allison finds her jacket from the party in her locker. Scott and Lydia solve math problems at the board. Lydia inquires about Scott's absence from the game, suspecting it's related to Jackson's injury. She teases that not playing might lead to their team winning and introduces Allison to other attractive players. In the hallway, Scott overhears the sheriff announcing a curfew due to the body discovery. Styles suggests finding the other half of the body to aid Derek's capture, suspected of killing the girl. Scott becomes agitated when Allison is introduced to a lacrosse player, and he questions her about the jacket's origin. Their discussion spirals into mentioning Derek, causing Allison to walk away. Scott confronts Derek at his home, spotting signs of recent burials. He implores Derek to leave Allison alone since she's unaware of their world. Derek hints that she might know more than Scott thinks. Styles visits Scott and inquires about his findings. Scott reveals he detected something buried on Derek's property, likely blood. He believes discovering the blood source could lead to Derek's arrest, allowing him to focus on controlling his shift for the lacrosse game. Styles and Scott visit the hospital to match the blood Scott smelled at Derek's with the corpse. While Scott investigates the morgue, Styles encounters Lydia who is preoccupied with her Bluetooth conversation, leaving Styles' confession unheard. Meanwhile, Scott searches the morgue for the body. Upon confirming its identity, he quickly hides it back in the drawer, deeply affected. In the lobby, Jackson emerges and informs Lydia that he received a cortisone shot from the doctor but was advised against making it a routine. Lydia advises him to get another shot before the game, mentioning that pros do it too. They share a kiss while Styles looks on disapprovingly. Scott exits the morgue and informs Styles that the scent matches. Styles suggests using this as proof against Derek. Scott contemplates whether he's motivated by the desire to play or to stop Derek. He reveals there were bite marks on the legs and Styles suggests they need shovels. During the night, Styles and Scott return to Derek's property. Scott senses something changed but can't pinpoint it. They dig until they unearth the body, only to find the head of a wolf instead of a human. Styles discovers Wolfsbane and unearths a rope forming a spiral around the grave. The wolf's head is now connected to the girl's body. The following morning, Derek is arrested by the sheriff for murder. Styles questions Derek about the girl's transformation into a real wolf. Derek redirects Styles' concern to Scott's shifting during the lacrosse game. Styles is pulled from the car by the sheriff, who asks about their woods excursion. Styles fabricates a story about looking for Scott's inhaler. While driving away from Derek's house, Styles discussing Scott's werewolf status agitates Scott, causing breathing difficulties due to the wolf's pain in Styles' back. Scott starts shifting and runs off. Styles calls the sheriff's station to inquire about Scott's whereabouts but gets disconnected. Scott almost enters Allison's room but catches his shifted reflection. He runs into her driveway, colliding with her father's car, shifting back to human form. Allison checks on him and he assures them he's fine, mentioning he was checking if she'd attend the game. She confirms she will, and her father agrees. Styles urges Scott not to play due to control concerns. Lydia taunts Scott about being a loser as he heads to the bench. Coach asks Jackson about his shoulder and encourages him to play through pain. Scott doesn't receive any passes as per Jackson's orders. Frustration triggers Scott's shift, helping him win the game. He's about to attack another player until he hears Allison in the stands, snapping him back. Post-game, he flees the field to avoid exposure in his shifted state. Allison searches for him in the locker room, finding him after he regains control. He apologizes for acting strangely. Admitting her presence makes him nervous, and he worries about his second chance. She forgives him, and they share a kiss before she leaves. Styles informs Scott that Derek was released due to evidence suggesting the girl was killed by an animal, not a person. They also uncover that the body belonged to Derek's sister, Laura Hale. Back on the field, Jackson picks up Scott's claw-marked glove and spots Derek behind him before Derek walks away. Scott's dream unfolds with him on a date with Allison, but it takes a dark turn as he enacts her murder on a bus. The following day, Scott confides in Styles about the unsettlingly vivid dream. Their conversation is interrupted when they open the door to the bus, finding it in a state of havoc. Scott becomes anxious, fearing the dream was real, and begins searching for Allison. Frustration boils over, 
leading him to inadvertently damage Jackson's locker. Astonished by his loss of control, he contemplates leaving school but encounters Allison, relieving his anxiety. He then witnesses Jackson's reaction to his damaged locker. In chemistry class, Scott and Stiles discuss recent events, captured by their teacher, Adrian Harris, who separates them. Harley alerts the class to activity outside, revealing a traumatized man being loaded into an ambulance. Scott suspects he's responsible. Lunchtime finds Scott and Stiles still grappling with the recent happenings. Lydia, Allison, Danny, Jackson, and Brian join them at the table. Conversation revolves around the incident and the man found, assumed by Jackson to be a drug addict. Stiles plays a news update, identifying the man as the bus driver, Garrison Myers, whom Scott recognizes. The topic shifts at Lydia's request, focusing on evening plans. The Scott and Allison's surprise. Lydia includes herself and Jackson in their date, turning it into a group outing. Struggling to decide on an activity, Lydia suggests bowling due to Jackson's affinity for it. When Scott's bowling skills come into question, he hesitates, leading Jackson to taunt him, prompting Scott to boast about his bowling prowess, a decision he regrets yet can't backtrack due to his job at the animal clinic. Arriving there, Scott finds the sheriff waiting, fearing a connection between him and the attack. However, the sheriff is there to have his dog's stitches removed and provides case files to help identify the animal involved. Later, while delivering dinner to his mother at the hospital, Scott visits the bus driver, triggering a panic attack. The next day, the sheriff's office sends a car to Derek Hale's home, but Derek uses his werewolf abilities to deter the deputy. As the car drives away, Scott approaches Derek for assistance. He inquires if Derek would harm or kill someone, to which Derek responds affirmatively. Derek offers to teach Scott memory recall and shift control, leaving his motives ambiguous. Derek instructs Scott to revisit the bus to retrieve his memories. That evening, Scott revisits the bus to recall his memories with Styles keeping watch. Afterward, they speed away upon seeing another person's arrival. Scott recalls trying to aid the man in encountering another wolf, presumably Derek, which piques Styles' curiosity. Meanwhile, Allison and Lydia select outfits for their group date when Mr. Argent intervenes, enforcing a curfew that confines Allison to the house. Despite this, Allison decides to sneak out, surprising Lydia. Derek visits the bus driver for questioning and is taken aback when the man recognizes him, repeatedly apologizing before dying. Later, during the date, Allison and Jackson excel at bowling, while Scott and Lydia struggle. Annoyed by Lydia and Jackson's confidence, Allison helps Scott improve his game by raising his blood pressure, triggering his werewolf abilities. However, Lydia's flirtatious behavior irks Scott. Unfazed, Lydia demonstrates perfect bowling form, revealing her prior poor performance was an act. Simultaneously, Mr. Argent and other hunters confront Derek at a gas station, implying knowledge of his werewolf status. The date concludes, and Scott attempts to mend relations with Jackson, who hints at Scott's hidden secret. Jackson promises to uncover the truth. After driving Allison home, they share a goodnight kiss. At home, Mrs. McCall nearly attacks Stiles with a baseball bat before realizing it's him. Scott arrives and admits they don't respect the police-enforced curfew. As she retires for the night, Scott and Stiles discuss the bus driver's death. Scott confronts Derek, accusing him of murder and threatening to expose him to the sheriff. Derek retaliates, initiating a physical fight that Scott ultimately loses. Post-fight, Derek clarifies he didn't kill the bus driver, and Scott accuses Derek of biting him. Despite Derek's denial, Scott remembers the night on the bus, identifying a third werewolf's presence. Derek explains the third werewolf is an alpha, the most dangerous type. He designates Scott and himself as betas, while the alpha is mightier and more primal. Laura Hale sought the alpha before her death, and Derek continues the search. Scott's involvement is crucial, as he's part of the Alpha's pack. Derek warns the Alpha desires Scott. Outside Hale House, the Alpha observes from the woods, its eyes glowing crimson. 